Hello, 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 guys. Welcome back to another video. This is the Football Connector. I'm your host, Sam, and we are back again with another one as we are doing live reactions of the Euros semifinals as Spain just beat the team that people said that we are unbeatable. This is the team that a lot of people are talking about, that this will be unstoppable. They'll hurt any team that they face in the tournament, but yet we are here. And the interesting part is that the player that so many of these players who were beaten were mocking is the guy who was literally the decider of the game. And that for me is really what speciality is all about. Because Lamin Yamal, this kid, is really, really literally trying to rewrite history, you know. We talk about this young one, the kids who have come up and proven that they are so much special and they've done so much in terms of what they've done, what they've achieved and so much of what they are actually going to do. And this kid comes out of nowhere. But what he's doing, people, it's not about exactly what, what you're seeing, but what he's doing and how much this kid is really turning football into something else. Because I think... We can talk about what Pele did coming out as a 17 year old, so much of what he achieves and exactly how far he went on as a player. But we have to come back and look at this. Yama is still 16. And of course, I get it that today is his last game as a 16 year old. When he will be playing the next game on Sunday, he will actually be a 17 year old. I think it's actually going to be on his birthday. As a 16 year old, I'm just gonna read something to you. And I think maybe you you learn to at least appreciate how much this kid is amazing. Cause what I'm seeing, it's out of this world and you have to respect it. Cause it's, it's, it's never been done to be honest when I tell you, it has never been done. Look at this, at the age of 16, Lamin Yamal, according to what he has been reviewed, it becomes the youngest player ever to win the men of the match in the UEFA Champions League. UEFA Champions League or UEFA, even UEFA Euro 2024. He is the first player to actually do this. The youngest player to ever score in the Euros. The youngest player to ever assist in a Euro. By the way, he has three assists of this. He is the youngest player to ever feature in a Euro to, in a Euro tournament, of course. The youngest player to ever feature in an El Clasico. The youngest player to ever score in La Liga game. The youngest player to ever assist in a Barca t-shirt. The youngest player in Barcelona history to reach 50 unofficial official games. And the youngest player to ever feature in UEFA Champions League knockout games. The youngest player to ever score a brace in La Liga history. And the youngest player to reach into three, into getting the golden boy or award or whatever that's going to have a bad. Look at the history that this young kid is making at this age. Look at how much he is an inspiration to what he's actually achieving because people, you take, you take this for granted. This is football. He was playing today and the guy who was behind him is older than his father. Can you actually believe it that the guy who was playing Jesus Navas is older than Yamal's father. And he's coming in and he's taking this tournament by storm. He doesn't care what people are gonna talk about. He doesn't care what Rabios are saying before the tournaments. He's here to prove what he's capable of doing. And today he was calling a meek out of this game. He was like, speak now. I want you here, you were talking about me. You were saying that I have to play outside of my skin and I did it. What are you going to say? speak now because what he's actually doing what he's actually achieving it's out of this world and i just have to give some respect to the spanish team because i said if you heard me in the last video that i made if you have been following on the connect i do put some videos on this on this facebook channel but i said that i believe spain has to go to the final firstly to save football because imagine a final of for example, let's say England beat Netherlands. Imagine the final of England versus France. Imagine, because to be honest, we all can be honest here. France have not been that good. In this tournament, since they've been in this tournament, they've been, they've really not been that good. And I am just happy that at least as a football fan, I can be hopeful for an actually good final in the Euros and actually enjoy so much of what has been happening in the Euros because 
man, it's really looking like it's going to be exciting to see how far we go with this tournament. But let's talk about Spain and I'll talk about France as we go forth. Let's talk about Spain. To have the confidence of trusting football into this youngster, Nick Williams on the other side and Yama on the other side. To a manager coming out in a tournament and actually having the faith and believe that this kid can play against the France. In France, we are talking about a team that has been almost in most of the finals that we've gone to. Last World Cup final, last World Cup final, they won it as well. As well, they win the Euros. I think they finished in the quarterfinals, or if I'm not mistaken, they even went to the finals. This is a team that has done it all. This is a team with a killing bump. This is a team that people believe that they have, they have the best players. They talk about the golden generation. And you can't go further than looking at this France team because we are talking about the likes of Dembele, talking about somebody like Tumeni, Kamavenga, and in Colo Kante, a guy who was never beaten in a French, French, French shirt today lost for the first time. He is in this team. This is a dangerous team. They are good. And Antonio Griezmann, they have achieved so much and they can still go keep going further because they are that good they believe in themselves and they know that they can hurt any team yet the manager of, of spain was like no yamao 16 year old you're gonna be on the right side and nico william you're gonna be on the left side you guys are gonna work to stretch and use your skills and what you can do and show these guys how you play football because also, even though we talk so much about this, one thing that I saw from today, remember they didn't have coverage, who was given a red card in the last game. They're also missing one of the de main defenders who was playing because he got, an, he got a yellow card. So it means he was suspended for this game. I'm trying to remember his name. The one who has been playing next to, to this guy. And the fact that they were working for each other, they were literally like each other's keepers. It reminded me a bit of what Real Madrid always do under Anche, Ancelotti, that they know that even when they're not really good, even though they're not really perfect, they will fight, they will live, they will sweat blood and tears in the game, and they will leave it all on the pitch. That's today what I saw from the Spain, especially on the defense side. Especially on the defense side, because this defense, they knew that if they were just okay, if they just worked so hard to stop this France team from scoring, from hurting them when they attack, the rest will be sorted out because they have that belief of trusting the youngsters in the upfront. And I'm, I'm going to highlight something that I think we talked about it and so many people don't look at it. When we were looking at Kobe, Kobe Minor and people were complaining that Pickford seems like he doesn't have trust in the player. So many times rather than to pass to Kobe Minor, he either maybe preferred to hit it long or maybe click, kick it to, to Kyle Walker. It's most of the times he lose the ball and stuff like that. I'm looking at this Spain team and... The goalkeeper sometimes when he holds the ball, when he sees that he's, the, of course, Roger is under pressure on the players in the middle, he actually locates and passes to Palamin Yamal. He, they have so much faith in the 16-year-old that they know that he will deliver, whether they like it or not, whether people are looking at it or not. He will always deliver. And it's amazing what I'm saying because I do believe history has been written today. I do believe with the performance we saw, it's not only a, 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 the history of a young kid coming out and showing so many players that he, it doesn't matter what age you are, if you are good, if you are good and if you trust yourself, you can shine at any tournament. You can shine at any tournament. And that's what Lamin Yamal did. And even though today I felt like Kunders was winning the better of Nico Williams, of Williams, Williams has really been actually one of the best players in this tournament as well. And it's amazing that we look at these youngsters and we say, how are they doing this? How are they doing? How do you have the confidence that you face up a player who has been doing this, Hernandez, who has been doing this for such a long time and you're not afraid to actually fear whatever that happens? Because Hernandez tried to rub some foot on Yamau, tried to at least put some fear into this kid, but this kid did not take it. He kept on fighting, he kept on putting pressure, and he did so well. Now I'm going to remind you of what Andre Rabiot said. Rabiot came out and he was like, for, for, for Spain to go further, Yamao has to play outside of his skin because France will not make it easy for him. And 
at the end of the game, Yamao came and he was like on the camera, speak now, speak now. Imagine a 16 year old having that belief that I know how to handle myself. I, I present myself and I'm gonna win this game. I'm gonna show these people, this is my last game as a 16 year old. Of course, I need to leave something. I need to make a mark which has never been made. I will score one of the world goals. I'll score one of the goals that are in contention of being goals of the tournament. I'll make that goalkeeper who so many people say that is unbreakable. I'll score him. And I'm going to make sure that I work my feet off, come back to defend, to help my team in defense. I saw him running around in the holding a grown man who was trying to score, holding him and believing that he will stop it because he believed in himself. That's what this team that we've seen, that's what this Spanish team are good at. They believe in themselves. They know that they have the quality in them. They know that they have the players who can do it. And we saw it. And having players like Rodri in the middle of the pitch, I feel like it's just a cheat code. <laughs> I feel like it's just a cheat code having the likes of Rodri showing what they do because Rodri, we've seen him week in and week out for Man City. He is one of the best. And they actually saying for this Spanish team, every time when Rodgers is in this team, they have been unbeaten for one year, three months. One year, three months. And you just have to respect this. So now my question is this. Who's the player of the tournament? Who's going to win this Euro? Who exactly is going to win this Euro? Because let me give you a scenario. Imagine Netherlands beat England. What some people are saying, of course. Imagine Netherlands beat England, and it means England are out. What does the what does this remind you of? Do you remember? Go back 2020-10, World Cup, South Africa. You remember that tournament? You remember the two teams that went to the final? It was Spain versus Netherlands, and it means we are reliving history. That fixture is happening again, but it is now in a different tournament in the Euros. And it's in 2024. Of course, different players. The only players who's linking those two generations is actually, guess what? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus Navas is the only player right now who's linking those two worlds. But this Spanish team looks so scary, people. And I feel like we are not paying attention to what this man is doing, the manager of Spain. People talked about him. Of course, he messed up and he saw it in this last game, taking out some of the best players in the team, taking them out so early. And I think you could see that he was trying to not make those mistakes again. Try by all means to create a team that is ready to compete, that can win anything. And I felt like today, really like today, he really did what he had to do. And he stepped up and he gave everything that this team needed and he got it done. I was told that this player, this guy has just been playing all, all along, coaching young stars, doing so well, trying to make them good. And now he has been given the opportunity to go represent Spain in the final of the Euros. And he has delivered. He has delivered. And it's amazing to see what's happening now because look at where this team is now. Look at what they have done now. Look at how far they can go. They are the favorites now in the tournament. They believe in themselves. They know that they can go far. They are the favorites. And I don't even know what you guys are expecting, but let me know what you think about the Spanish team and how far you think they can go in this tournament. Now let's talk about France because I'm not going to just look elsewhere and say that maybe they do not compete or what. This team has been horrendous, people. <laughs> That's the, the easiest way I can actually analyze it. They have been horrendous. How do you think you, you expect yourself to win a tournament when you have literally even scored a goal until the semifinals? How does that even make sense? An open play goal. They haven't scored until this time. The only goal that they've scored before the head of today was a penalty. And it was the, about, I think it was with a smaller team. Of course, people have been picking up that defense. Yeah, they've got William Saliba, they've got you know, whoever, the Opamakano, they're unbreakable, they're good. In, the, in front, they've got Kante, of course, one of the best players. They've got 
um, too many, they are good, they don't hurt any team, they've got Rabio. What happened today? To be honest, what people are saying and what the readers are saying, they're actually saying that today was France's best performance, but they just played with a better team. Their best performance could not get them anywhere. Their best performance got them out of the tournament. <laughs> and you would actually expect that this team could actually win the tournament. I had to be a dreamer, people. I had to be a dreamer. Let's hear what Kylian Mbappe had to say after um, the performance that his team has actually put out. Let's hear what he had to say. Let's read this. Let's read this. So this is what Kylian Mbappe say or do just after the game. In football, you are good or you are not good. I wasn't good. My Euro is my Euro was a failure. I wanted to be a European champion. I will not go on holiday and I will rest. Well, it will do more a lot good than I'll get ready for, to start my new life. Of course, it's going to be a Real Madrid player now. And I think you have to respect this. That takes so much guts. That takes so much from a player who's still growing in his craft to actually admit that, oh, we have not done well. We don't deserve to be at the level we are. We haven't performed so well. We haven't given as much as we can. I did not perform so well. And people talk about, I had people talking about his mask. That's in that his mask actually maybe in a way limited him to show what Killing Bambi can do. Because this is a guy who scored, if you don't really remember, this is a guy who scored a hat trick in the final of the World Cup. The only trophy he doesn't have is Euro. And according to him, he wanted to win this. And of course, he did not perform so well. That's why he did not win. So it makes sense, to be honest, to, for him to come out and actually admit that I have not been perfect. I need to go work on myself and see how I can get better. If I get better, I can come and do better. Because what today they saw was a team that is good. Of course, France, we are never going to write that out. They are a good team, but they've just not been performing so well. And I want to know your thoughts in the comment section. What can you say about this French team? Have you really been impressed with what they've done? Have you really seen them really doing more, more than what we have seen? Let me let me tell you what we've seen. Dembele running left and right. He has been doing that almost. Kylian Bambe trying to do, but not doing enough. There are, there are strikers missing the net all the time. It felt like they were really trying to use force to force the ball in, but not actually playing football to get the ball at the back of the net. Their only savior, and I'm being honest with you, their only savior has been their defense. Their defense, as much as I'm going to make fun of this team, as much as I'm going to say what I can say about this French team, their defense have actually been the best defense in the tournament until today, of course, because they've actually been scored their first and second goal of the tournament. They were scored against Netherlands, but, you know, English referees and their Texas, they always know how to mess things up. But they are different. They have not really been good, this French team. And I'm really happy that a player like Kylian Mbappe can come out and actually admit that, okay, I've been in this tournament and uh, we've seen everything that has been happening, but we haven't been that good. We haven't performed so well and uh, I can admit that. And to make it matters worse, after taking out Nkolo Kante, who actually I feel like if they are going to award any best player in the, in the French team, Nkolo Kante deserves to be given that, you know, that honor. He deserves to be actually honored for being one of the best players in the tournament because if I tell you this, if you have been paying attention, after Nkolo Kante went out of that game, after he was taken out, when Griezmann and the Kamavenga came in, there was no intent of trying to come back into the game. There was no intent. In fact, it was only full of frustration. And it actually allowed the Spain team to play its tiki-taka football. They were opening up spaces that no French players were able to cover on time to try and get the ball. And how skillful these Spanish players are in terms of moving the ball and trying to stretch the game, trying to stretch the game and eat up the time. They are so good at it. And remember, people forget that Spain is the home of tiki-taka football. So they know how to pass the ball. 
They know how to pass the ball, how to move with the ball, how to set it up, how to actually do well. They know those things. They've been doing it for such a long time. It's just that we don't really pay attention to it, but they showed it. And I think if I'm to analyze their game today and their performance today, I saw a bit of a Real Madrid type of football as well as Barcelona type of football. In terms of defensive, working for each other, they did like what Real Madrid have been doing all seasons long, especially under, under Ancelotti. They have been working for each other. They understand that, okay, we don't have a cover job, a right-sided player who can play there. Jesus Navas is injured. And we are putting a, a, a defender, a, 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 a centre-back, at the right, where he's going to be dealing with, uh, with Kylian Mbappe. What do we do? Every single time when Kylian Mbappe has the ball, Rodri was dropping in, Yama was dropping in, making sure that they protect that right side. When Kylian Mbappe moved in the middle, they were making sure that Rodri and, um, uh, I think it was Ruiz, Luis, Fabian Ruiz, most of the time, they were dropping in. It was always four against him. So, as much as we know Kylian Mbappe being a speed star, very good with running with the ball in the hurting teams, he's not really much of a dribbler who can get away from so many players who are around him. And he's not actually much of a player who can maybe do like what Lenyama was doing when maybe there were so many French players around him that he can just flick the ball and it goes and falls in one of his players. He's not really that good who can actually invite the pressure inviting the pressure and opening spaces, knowing that he trusts his passing accuracy to actually reach a player and actually be influential. So it means every single time, whenever people were double, they were double down on him, nothing was being produced. And it was the, the story of this game in most of the places, in most of the moments that they were double, that there was so much on him and he was failing to actually show that impressive, to actually produce something that maybe we would be talking about right now because it didn't, everything that they did could not produce what the results they needed, which was a victory. And now we are here talking about what exactly have they done? What exactly has this French team actually done? This is a tournament that they are leaving without actually performing so well. That's why I was saying that I was not ready to watch a final of this France team against either the Netherlands or England. I needed a team for the good of football, who has been playing well in terms of football-wise, to get there and show what they actually do. This team have won all the six games that they've played in a row. And if they're going to be stopped, it's going to happen in the final. Who do you think has the audacity to be this, French, this Spanish team? Look, look, look at the tournament as a whole. Look at the team that are left. And at the moment, still three because another team is going to be eliminated. It's going to be taken out. Oh, it's already today because it's already morning my time. Who exactly do you think is the team that can take the Spanish team out? I want you guys to be honest. Look at what you're seeing. Look at what you're seeing. Looking at the game. Who has the power to actually stop the Spanish team? Because as I'm looking at it, I don't see anyone. As I'm looking at it, I don't see anyone who can actually be that influential. And it's just the truth of the game, people. It's just the truth of the game. They've got so good players. The, uh, Rodri, a player who can do so much alone. I think the the aura of Rodri, we, we, it was never tested with the like of N'Golo Kande being active in the way he was today. And because you have to understand, so many people talk about the maybe Rodri said that there are so many City players around him, so it's easier for him to get to actually be able to play football and to do well. But today I felt like he was alone. He was left out there. And somehow, somehow he proved that he's that good knowing how his young players are moving, knowing where to put the places, looking at the places where the space is, getting the ball, holding it, and setting up for the strikers to attack. That's what a DM is. In fact, a perfect DM. Now, which led me into my next thing. If Spain win the tournament, does Rodri deserve the Ballon d'Or? Does Rodri deserve the Ballon d'Or? Because look at it. There's no longer Lionel Messi, of course, we get that. But look at it. Jude Bellingham, he was a contender. But what has he been doing? Vinny Jr. was a contender. He went out early in the tournament of what he has been com com competing for. 
if Spain win the Jazz, Rodri deserved the Ballon d'Or because he has been the perfect GM. He is the reason why Man City won the league last season. He is the reason why, actually, I feel like the most important player in that Spanish team because if he's not in that midfield, oh, 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 I don't even want to think about it. So I wonder, does Rodri deserve to win the Ballon d'Or? Does it deserve? That's my question to you out there in the world. Let me know in the comment section. Do you think it deserves to win the Ballon d'Or? And how far do you see the likes of Flamin Yamal going? These young kids who are showing that they are, they've got the whole world in their hands and they can do so much. They will go far in terms of football-wise. What are you expecting from these youngsters? And what does France need to do? Because I've heard rumors of maybe Zidane really, really been looking at that job of being the French manager. Do you think it's time for change? It's just a question that I'm asking. Do you think it's time for change? Maybe with that change, you will see something new, something different, something that so many people will be proud and happy for. That's the question that I'm asking you today. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section, guys. And let me, I want to understand where you're watching us from. What are you expecting? I'll be back here tomorrow again with another live stream as we talk about England versus Netherlands. Let me talk about England and Netherlands as well, just to try to build up. It's going to be an interesting game tomorrow, I'm sure. And I think, I really think they have their opportunity of these two teams to cancel each other because I thought Netherlands with Virgil van Dijk, Nata Aki, some of the best, and Van der Ven, they were strong as defense, but I feel like there are so many holes in that team. And I thought England were going to be playing football, but since I've watched them, they've been playing something like football. It's not really football. It's trying to be football, still being seen as football, but it's still not football. All the analysis I've seen, they've been crap. It is only moments, players. I think... It, it reminds me so much of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's football where they were relying more on moments. What is a, a Paul Pogba going to do? That's what England has been. But when it comes to the Netherlands, they are not good defensively, but they've got little strikers. Memphis Depay, I did complain that sometimes he's not performing so well. You do see that he's trying, though. You, you have Javi, Javi Simons, who's performing so well. Imagine all these players and linking up and as well. I haven't forgotten him. Cody Gagpo literally is looking like one of the best players in this tournament, scoring for fun. What can he do tomorrow against this England? But I'm not going to also run away, run, run away and not actually mention how dangerous this England team is as well. We are looking at Isaka, what he can do, even though Kane has not been perfect. He's still a little striker, one of the best in the world. What can he do? How much can he be influential into this game? What can he offer into this game? So there are so many things we can look at and actually say, okay, this could be a different game, but it's not really written in stones at the moment. We have to wait and see how the tournament goes. We have to wait and see how the game is actually played. But right now, what I can do is to tell people that it's my time to disappear from here. Transfer news have been going on, and I think I'm going to be coming for some transfer news nights to stay on with some of the nights. I'll be doing some live streams, so I would like that you join in. And if you want to maybe tag along and you have some things to say on the connect, let me know in the comments section or you actually reach me on the messages so that we get to know each other about it. Thank you very much for watching. And I, I'm actually surprised so many people have been watching, but you're not clicking the like button. Click the like button, Facebook. Show support, guys. That's the best way you can do. If you're just joining us for the first time, I'm just writing, speaking so much of how much I admire this Spanish team and how much they've been able to play with the team that is recognized as the best in the world and be able to play football and show them what real football is, what tiki-taka football is actually is. And it's amazing that we are here, but it's because we are here, it means it's time for you to click the like button, subscribe if you have not gone. There's a link in the bio of the Football Connect. Go check out the Football Connect YouTube page where you get so many of my videos. I'm always dropping something new every day. There are some videos that I do that you don't even get to see on Facebook. You get to find them there, people. So do me a favor, like that vid. Subscribe, and I'll see you on another one. This has been Sam, and this has been the TFC. I'm out. Subscribe. We'll see you on another one.
peace. We are out. So as we leave, we're going to leave you with this little small thing and I hope to see you again soon. Peace. Like I say, hit the like. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Do it now. Meets the goalkeeper. You just lost for words. He is just brilliant. Georgia Pan Steer.